So super exciting. I just found out I'm going to... Hey, way I. It's Hawaii, Buzz. You get the idea. Uh, the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii, October 10th, 2020, uh, I get to go. I just got my confirmation email and obviously straight away I went and registered. Now, I would never qualify for the World Championships or the Ironman events. They have a legacy program. So people like me who never normally qualify, you do 12 full Ironman events and you get to participate. You get a certain year. Mine was granted a couple of years ago for 2020. So I've now got my confirmation that I get to go Hawaii. Obviously super excited. Um, my adventures started off back when I was a kid. So when I was seven years old, I did martial arts. I did karate, judo, aikido, taekwondo, thai boxing, kempo jiu-jitsu. Uh, when I came to America, I did Krav Maga. I taught that for seven years. Um, I did the London Marathon back when I was in England. Obviously much, much younger there. But even then my hair's starting to go already. That was back in 2003. Uh, I did a little, uh, it was an Olympic, the London Triathlon. I did it on my road bike. Um, that's the bike I used to ride to work and back. It was a 13 mile there, 13 mile back um, road bike. So I would use that to go to work. And I used that as did my first Olympic triathlon. That's the only one I ever did. Uh, then I came to America and I kind of got into the Disney events. So kind of I did the Dopey Challenge. You got all this bling, lots of Disney things, which I loved. So I did the, the Disney marathons. And it was kind of during the Disney marathons that I actually saw on the Jungle Cruise. It was after the last one I did in 2015, uh, this guy had an Iron Man finisher jacket on. And I was like, well, what's an Iron Man? And I found out, well, okay, it's a 26.2 mile run, a full marathon. I was like, well, I just did that. Um, so that should be okay. And then I saw, oh, okay, and it's a 112 mile bike ride. Well, as I said, I used to ride my bike to work and back, that was 26 miles a day. Um, so, okay, and I've done some 100 mile bike rides without training. So that, okay, should be okay. And a 2.4 mile swim. Uh, I'm gonna drown. I can do the breaststroke, but I couldn't do front crawl at all. When I did that triathlon in England, the Olympic distance, I did breaststroke for the entire swim. Um, so that was obviously going to be a challenge. Um, I had to learn to do the front crawl. I could do one length and I was exhausted. My, my legs were doing that. Um, but I go from one length to two lengths and I kind of added the distance. And it's in this order. You swim first, then bike, then run. Um, I'm assuming the logic is this is kind of the most dangerous in a lot of ways, so do that while you've still got some energy. That's kind of the next dangerous, you fall off your bike, ow. This, you're exhausted, you fall over, you fall on the ground. So they did it in the reverse order, I think they'd have a lot of logistical challenges. So I found out, well that's what an Ironman is. And I was like, okay, I have to do an Ironman. That, that's the next thing to do. And I've always had this belief that if I believe in myself that I can do something, I can do it. Now, so when I saw this, uh, I thought it was mid-January. And it was an Ironman Texas in mid-May. So that kind of gave me four months of training. Specifically the swim. I, I had to be able to swim that kind of distance. I had the tri-bike that I bought after the London triathlon that I'd never used, but I brought it with me over from England uh, to the States. It was kind of old, but I could use that. And I was about 225 pounds. Um, six foot, 225, about 30 pounds of fat I really didn't need on me, but there it was. Um, now there were half Ironman events. Uh, I could have done a, an Olympic triathlon. But I've always kind of had this go big, go home. And in fact, Arnold Schwarzenegger has these kind of five rules. Um, just above my screen is actually those five rules. And this is from above this screen. My wife had this made for me for our anniversary. And it's kind of these five rules are all about succeeding in life. And I, I, I really believe in them. So sort of find your vision. My vision was I'm going to do an Ironman. Um, I have multiple visions of different things and goals in life, but that was now a vision. Never ever think small. Um, think big. People often think small because they're afraid of failure. If I have a small goal, I'll probably succeed. I won't fail. Um, think big. Um, it's okay to fail. Everyone fails 
it's not letting it get you down. It's about getting up and keep going. And so I'm like, do a full Ironman. Ignore the naysayers. So that was actually huge. Uh, as soon as I said I was going to do an Ironman, people would say, you can't do an Ironman. Um, you're too big, you're too heavy. Um, people actually bet against me. Someone bet me a steak dinner that uh, I wouldn't be able to do it. In fact, they said I wouldn't finish the swim. I don't quite know what would happen. Um, but ignore them. Believe in yourself. Work your ass off. You never want to fail because you didn't try hard enough. And in everything I do, I always try and put everything into it. I try not to waste time. When I train, I'm normally watching technical videos. When I swim, I have earphones in actually now. And I can listen to podcasts and things. When I'm driving, I'm listening to podcasts. I'm trying to learn. So work your butt off. Don't fail because you didn't try hard enough. And then obviously you want to give something back. Help others. So kind of these five key rules. And all of those really go into okay, the Ironman. So it's like, I don't want to do a half. I don't want to do an Olympic. I'm just going to go for a full. So, swimming was a huge focus area. And I did get up to 90 minutes in the pool. I could finally do 90, and this was just before the Ironman, uh, I could do 90 minutes. I'd never been in the open water, uh, but I was like, do you know, that, that should be fine. All my training was inside. So my bike, I would set up spin bikes at lifetime. I would put an iPad and I would watch movies. I'd have my drinks, everything else. And I would use a treadmill for all of the running. I wasn't a member of a tri club, I didn't ride outside, I'm not recommending this. Um, I didn't have a coach, I just would try harder and just keep pushing myself. Everything was on my own. I trained super early uh, on the spin bikes, on the treadmills, in the swimming pool. And so I still did my weight training. So I, I didn't want to lose muscle mass, so I would do bulk of cardio and then I would do my weight training. So Ironman Texas 2015. Um, really four months, I guess, after I decided to do it, was the Ironman. And uh, so there's my old tri bike I used to do it in. There's me finishing, and you can kind of see sunburn. Um, and I did finish, but it basically killed me. Um, it took me 15 hours, 9 minutes. The swim was 137. The bike was 6 hours, 33. A friend of mine says, you always pay the bill. You can pay the bill in the training, or you can pay the bill on the event. Well, I paid the bill on the event. I just hadn't done enough training. Um, so during the bike, I got burnt really badly. As it turns out, it was second degree sunburn I got. And I remember getting off the bike, and I was sitting in the transition tents. There were tents between the, the swim and the bike, and then the bike and the run. So T2, transition two, is between the bike and the run. And I, I was exhausted, because I just wasn't fit enough. And I had this terrible sunburn all on my legs. And I remember just sitting in T2 with my head in my hands for about a good 10 minutes. Like, I can't possibly now do a marathon. And I was like, well, you don't give up, you, you keep trying. And I remembered this video I'd seen of a little boy who had cerebral palsy. And he was doing his first triathlon. And he put his walker aside and he ran and he fell, and he got up and he ran and he fell, and he got up and he finished. So it's like, he could do this, he's got it far harder than I have, just get up, you lazy bugger, and, and run. Well, he didn't really run, he pretty much walked, 6 hours 28 for the marathon, and it was exhausting. But, uh, it was 100 degrees, it was like 100% humidity, this is the woodlands in Houston, and so you have to pay the bill. And so, kind of there's the sunburn on my legs, uh, that hurt but I did finish and you got that excitement of Mike Riley calling me over the finish line I was very tired after that uh, they actually put me in a wheelchair after that. They took me to the medical tent where I spent an hour being force-fed uh, chicken broth. They had an IV shortage that year, so they didn't, didn't give you IVs. So if you were conscious, which I was, they, uh, they gave you chicken broth. But I did it. So I did my IMAP. And I remember phoning my wife afterwards. I was like, never ever doing that again. Done. Never again. Next morning I woke up. I was like, Joe, I could do better. Um, I hadn't trained enough. The sunburn messed me up. I'll try next year. So I carried on the training for another year, 
Hi right, man, Texas came along. I was still 225, but I did buy a flashy new tri bike. Obviously, that would make a huge difference in my timing. Um, but the bike course was shortened. There was road work. So the bike course was only 96 miles, so not a proper full Ironman. It didn't count for me. It didn't count. And there was this huge hailstorm during the marathon part where they stopped a lot of people. Now, I didn't get stopped because I was kind of between where they would stop you, so I was just out in the hail. So that was a lot of fun. But I, I finished. But again, my, my time for me, it couldn't count because the bike was a shortened course. So I didn't consider I'd done another Ironman. So I was like, okay, I'll find another one. So I found Chattanooga. And I'm English. Uh, I don't do well in the heat. So both of these had been hot days. So I was like, Chattanooga, later in the year will be cooler. So I'll have a much better shot doing a good time. So this was a cooler Ironman, um, which had a freak heat day. So I'd pick this one so it would be cooler. Uh, it had this very hot day. It had like this record did not finish DNF of all the people attending. Now I did finish. The nice thing, the swim was downstream. So swimming is by far my weakest. Uh, I, I don't like the swimming. Because it was downstream, the current helps you. Someone actually said a plastic bag made the cutoff time for the swim. You think you get two hours 20 to do the swim. And I should point out, all of this is obviously in one day. You have 17 hours total to do this. But the swim downstream was awesome. The bike course was hilly, the run was hilly, but I did it. And what I'd done between Texas and Chattanooga, I was like, look, my knees were hurting me. I had this 30 pounds of 225, 30 pounds of excess fat, I, I decided to lose it. So I cut out sweets and cakes for four months and I dropped the 30 pounds. So I was like 195 at this point, and I still am, I should be over that now. But I did the run, and 14.29, so I beat my previous time. But as you can see, both the bike and the run, I mean, they're, they're still slow, but the swim, 109. Thank you, downstream current. Now I should point out, the bike is not 112 miles in Chattanooga. I think it's 116, it's four extra miles, maybe to make up for the downstream swim. So that number is slightly longer, but a new personal best. Again, I can't count Texas, because it was a shortened course. So that was an interesting point. Um, I'd done three, and that's when I found out about the legacy thing. I started writing up race reports on my website, and I was like, well, if you do 12, you get to go to Kona. And anything I ever do, I want to try and reach the upper level at. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, there's a path to get to Kona. I need to do nine more Ironman events. So now I had a new vision. Take part in Kona and do every single North American Ironman. And that, that's still ongoing. So for 2017, I got to seven. I did Texas again. And I actually set, um, so it was 13 hours. That uh, was my time, so I set a new PR. You know, it's I've got knee sleeves on, so my knees. As it turns out, these destroyed me, which I'll talk about later on. But I did Texas. I did Santa Rosa. I did Chattanooga again, and I got the swim down sub hour. It's a very strong current that year. And I did Florida. So now, again, I'm at seven Ironman events. So I'm, I'm on my way. 2018, I did Texas again. Set a new PR, 12.47. And again, I, I, I'm still not part of a tri program, not got a coach. The only thing I got a coach for was in this year, um, I got two half hour sessions with a swim coach. Because I was trying to get my swimming better. I'm, I'm still a terrible swimmer. And I tried the thing where you hold a float and you kick your legs. And when I did that, I went backwards, which, which seems physically impossible. But if I hold a float and kick, I go backwards. So I did work with a swim coach, so at least I don't go backwards. I don't really go forwards, but at least I don't go backwards anymore. So I did have two half-hour sessions. But my training is really the same, all inside. So I did Texas. I did Boulder. Lake Placid. Wisconsin and Chattanooga again. Chattanooga, there's no swim. The swim got cancelled. <laughs> There'd been a lot of rain, a lot of flooding. I think the, the current was so strong, it would have washed us all out somewhere. But also I guess people have been, had to dump water into the stream. 
So the E. coli was 20 times the safe limit. So they cancelled the swim, which works out quite well for me because that's by far my, my worst time. So the bike and the run, again, we don't count the time. It's not PR because there was no swim. But now I'm at 12. So I applied to the legacy program and I was told, hey, yep, so there's my medals up to this point. That's my 12 medals. And I was given a 2020 date. So I knew that was, I applied in 2019. So it was the year after that I was told I would get my legacy slot. So now I'm just carrying on really. I've got my slot. You need to do, a, I think it's a full the next year. So for 2020, um, I had my goals. Now something happened. Um, New Year's Eve 2018, I did a full marathon. Then in New Year's Day 2019, I did a full again. It's called the double. Well, it was really cold and I had my sort of knee brace on. And the knee brace had slipped down straight away underneath my knee. And it was just cutting off my knee. But I left it there because I had leggings on because it was so cold. Well, it damaged the ligaments in my knee. So essentially, I didn't do any running. I did not really run from January through to the Ironman Texas. I didn't do any running. I didn't swim either. Swimming aggravated my knee. Now, I did go to a doctor to check. And essentially, I'm Bruce Wayne um, in terms of knees. I have seen worse cartilage in knees. It's good. No, that's because there is no cartilage in your knee and not much of any use in your elbows or your shoulders. Between that and the scar tissue on your kidneys, the residual concussive damage to your brain tissue and the general scarred over quality of your body, I cannot recommend that you go hella skiing, Mr. Wayne. Right. So I, I fractured my knee once in Taekwondo. I dislocated my elbow uh, in Krav Maga. So I've got arthritis in my left knee. I've got arthritis in my left elbow. Um, and it's actually just damaged the tendon. So I didn't do really any running before Texas. And I didn't swim for the entire 2019. I got in a pool three times for like five minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. That was it. I didn't do any swim training for the entire 2019 year because it hurt my knees to swim. So I did Texas and I actually PR'd it. Uh, my swim time. If you may have, may have noticed, it's always 90 minutes. If I do a ton of swimming training or I do none at all, I'm always 90 minutes. So I didn't swim, I got in a pool for five minutes before Texas. And I hadn't swum since the previous Ironman eight, nine months earlier. My swim time was still 90 minutes. Again, it's wetsuit. Wetsuit helps me a lot. It helps my buoyancy. Without a wetsuit, I just sink. Um, but I PR'd it. Because of what I'd done is because I couldn't run, I did just a lot of bike. I got my bike power up a lot. So I think that really helped me. I found the bike easier. I was stronger on the bike. So when it got to the run, I had more energy because I was much, much stronger on the bike. Then I went and did Canada, which was awesome. That's hilly. That was a tough, tough bike course. And then I did Maryland. So my new PR is kind of 12.41ish and I still got more to do, which brings us, so I'm now at 15. So I'm at 15, as I stand here right now, it's 2020. Oh, and I also did a Spartan Beast just after Maryland in October for a bit of fun. It's like 13 miles, like 30 obstacles. So the 2020 plan. Obviously, we have Kona, 10-10-2020. That would be my 16th. I want to do Mont Tremblant. I want one kind of a couple of months before Kona, and it's on my list of all North America. So now that makes Kona my 17th. Well, then they introduced St. George. And that's on a three-year cycle. So again, I want to do all North America. I kind of have to do that one. So that kind of will be my 18th. And then they introduced Tulsa. And it's the inaugural one. And you kind of want to do the inaugural one. And there's only a three-week gap. So it's a... Like, nah. That would make World Championships my 19th. So 10, 10, 20, 20... 19th. Now you notice I've done Texas every year. And I really wanted to do it this year. It's the 10th anniversary. But St. George is the week after. I kind of had to pick one. My OCD-ness, I don't want Kona to be my 19th Ironman on 10, 10, 20, 20. So I'm doing Texas as well. So Texas is the week before St. George, 10th anniversary. The week after I'll go and do St. George which is actually giving me logistical challenges. I can't get my bike there, so I'm having to hire a bike in St. George because Tri-Bike can't get it 
in that short notice. Three weeks later, I'll do Tulsa, and then I've got a couple of months gap. I can do Montreblanc. So now Kona will be my 20th. 20th on 10, 10, 20, 20, which feels very good for me. Yep. And I'm going to do the Spartan Ultra. It's a 31 mile Spartan race. It's like two loops and extra. So it's like 60 obstacles or something. I don't know. But that'd be fun. So a goal, vision. Um, don't think small. I want to do Kona in 12 hours. Now Kona is a very tough course. Um, the conditions are tough, but I would like to do 12 hours. Now, obviously, my current PR is 1241. Now, that is improved from 15 hours, 9 minutes for my first one. So I've knocked off two and a half hours in five years. So I need to try and knock off another 41 minutes. So math. When I do Ironman events, I'm constantly doing math. Um, when I'm on the bike, it's like, how fast am I going? Okay, I need to average this speed to finish in this amount of time. When I'm on the run, okay, I need to run at this speed to finish in this. I'm always thinking about the numbers and what I need to run out or finish out. So I figure, it's no wetsuit for Kona. So this will be the first time ever I've done an Ironman without a wetsuit. There's always been wetsuit legal, and my initial ones, it was wetsuit optional, and for the two Texas, I did it, because again, I wasn't a strong swimmer. I'm gonna try and get it out to 125. So I've started to do a lot more swimming already. Like today, I did an hour and a half swim. Today, I did an hour and a half swim. So I'm trying twice a week to do a 90 minute swim. So I'm hoping I can get it down to 125. Give myself 10 minutes in transition one. I then need to do a five hour 25 bike. Now that's 21 miles an hour. I think I can get there. Again, it's gonna depend a bit on the conditions of the day. 10 minute transition again. Again, if I can shorten these, it gives me a bit of time back. I need to do a 450 marathon, which I've never, ever done in an Ironman. Um, I have done sub five once. And the problem I have at the moment is I can't run very much. My knees have uh, <laughs> limited miles left. I can't run more than two hours at a time. So I'm gonna try a run walk. I did that last year because I hadn't done any running training. And so I did run walk for all three of the Ironmans last year and it actually worked pretty well for me. I wasn't much slower than if I just tried to run. So I figured if I can run at 6.4 miles an hour and walk at four, that will give me the average enough to finish 450. So that's the math of how I can do a 12 hour Ironman. Now how? I can't run that much, two hours max. Really it's Wednesday I do a two hour run and then Saturday after my bike, I do a one to two hour run. I'm gonna focus on bike power and swimming. I'm still doing all my training inside. I'm not gonna run outside. I'm gonna do a bit of running outside. One of the things I have found with the running is my quads hurt when I run outside. I guess they're not used to the impact. So I do wanna start doing some running outside, but the bike, I'm gonna do all inside, swimming, pool. So what I'm focusing on is on a Monday, I do like a hard 90 minute bike ride. I'm trying to do a high wattage, like high resistance, like hills. So that's about 260 watts right now for 90 minutes, the average. Swimming, that was this morning's swim. I uh, did 132, 3600 meters. Again, it's not, that's not 4.2 miles, but it's close. And again, I always do a 90 minute Ironman swim. So I think I'm just slower in the pool. And then on Saturdays, this was, this was the same ride, it's just like to pee in between the bike reset. So that was four and a half hours, averaging like 222 watts. So my goal is to get my power up on the bike, improve my swimming. The run, I'm gonna try and get my speed up to maybe six miles an hour on the run for two hours, but that's kind of is what it is. So during the week, my routine, I get up at 2.30, and I have a protein shake, um, actually chocolate milk, half a bagel, get to the gym. I do my 90 minutes of cardio. So on Monday and Thursday, that's bike. On Tuesday and Friday, that's swim. On Wednesday, it's two hours run instead of 90. And then Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday is 75 minutes of weight training. Monday, Thursday, chest and tries. Tuesday, Friday, back and biceps. Wednesday, Saturday, shoulders. I don't really do much legs. Um, I do abs and stretching all of the days. Then back home, 7.30 I start working. I actually work from home now, which is phenomenal. I have cereal about 
At 11 o'clock, I break for lunch. I go and walk my dog, so get out, stretch the legs a little bit. Then back to work at 11.30. I stop at 5, we have dinner. 5.30, I work again. I do a lot of stuff outside my normal day job. I create a lot of courses on Pluralsight. I create YouTube videos. I've written nine books. And so I'll work on that stuff um, for like an hour and a half. Then at 7, hang out with the family. And I go to bed at 7.45. So that's every day. Again, when I'm driving to and from, I'm listening to podcasts. I got these Aftershock headphones. I hated swimming because it was so boring. These Aftershock headphones things, it it's works on the jawbone, and I listen to podcasts now while I swim. It's phenomenal. When I'm on the bike, I watch technical videos, so I can always learn stuff while I'm, I'm doing things. Maybe it's motivational. Uh, I listen to like Mike Riley's book. I bought the audio book for that. I just finished listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography. Saturday, uh, it depends. Uh, because I've got to do Texas and St. George the week after, I'm trying to do like two weeks big training on Saturdays and then week off. So it's a big training, I get up at one, I go to the gym, start working out, 2.15, I do five hours on the bike, then try and do one to two hours running. Then at 10 o'clock I've got a Krav Maga class. Then I come home, have lunch, hang out with the family the rest of the day. No working. Um, we often go and watch a movie Saturday afternoon, and it's a kid's movie, and so when you're in the seat and it reclines and it goes dark, I normally see the first 10 minutes of the film, the last 10 minutes of the film, and I'm out for the middle bit. And then go to bed at 7.45. Exciting life I lead. Sunday, I don't train. I wake up, I don't set an alarm, but I wake up at maybe three. The latest ever is five. Often it's three or four, just because of habit. And I'll work. I can't do recording for like courses because it disturbs the family, but I'll write slides, I'll write blog posts or whatever. When the kids wake up at seven, we go have breakfast together. 8 o'clock, I, I wash my car. I like washing my car myself. Then 9 o'clock, I work. I record till about 11. Lunch, family time. 1 o'clock, I work again. Stop working at 4. Family time. And then hang out with family and sleep. It's a routine. I do the same thing all the time. So training six days a week, Sunday. I don't do anything other than wash the car, walk the dog, whatever. So that's it. That's my plan. Um, I, I'm really hoping I can get to 12. My focus is going to be get a bigger engine. Um, for the bike, I'm just going to try and get my wattage up and just make myself a bigger engine. For the swim, I'm hoping if I swim 90 minutes twice a week, I'll just, I'm, I'm focusing on my technique, trying to like, when water goes in, bend the elbow and push back. Uh, watch some videos about that stuff. Um, but super excited and I can't wait to be part of Kona. I'll see you there.